Hello everybody and welcome back to another Snowflake tutorial video. We had a while back this IoT demo with Azure and Snowflake services at our office. It was a couple of weeks ago as you can see from the date here. And we're not going to go through all of the demo right now, but the purpose is just to demonstrate a little bit how Snowflake connects with Azure and how you can handle semi-structured data from different inputs and then finally output it to Power BI. So the case itself in this demo was that we have a, a company that is a network operator and it has multiple sensors in this case around the world and they are measuring electricity consumption, temperature, humidity and so forth. And we are using Azure and Snowflake to have real-time monitoring, storing and analyzing the data and keeping track of sensor failures and alerts. And the sensors are sending this small JSON formatted telemetry, as you can see here. Uh, and they send it, there's 20 sensors and one sensor sends four telemetries per minute. So this is the data flow overview. So you can see here in the upper left side, we have these IoT sensors that are in this case simulated by Azure Virtual Machine. And they send their telemetry straight to IoT Hub from where the data gets routed onwards with different routing logics. So the path one and three, we're not gonna go through here, but the path one detects anomalies from the sensor readings and sends automatic email tickets onwards. And the path three allows to live stream data to um, web browser Power BI dashboards. But so the path two, we are using Azure SDKs to connect the sensors and send the data to IoT Hub, where it gets batched uh, with specified intervals, and then all of it is stored in the blob storage. And the blob storage here is the connection point for Snowflake. So all we need to basically do is to create an SAS token that allows us to create an external stage in Snowflake from which we can copy the data back and forth. And then, as you know, Snowflake is really flexible in integration. So here we have used a function app. It's the same as in Lambda AWS. And I have used Snowflake Node.js connector to automatically perform this data copy. And my trigger here is once an hour, but I could trigger it also by new incoming files, for example. Then we're gonna to go to quickly to Azure just to show you the dashboard here. So here I can send the see the device to cloud messages. And since they're simulated, they're always sending 20 sensors sent 80 messages per minute. So the line is pretty straight here. And I can see the CPU usage in my virtual machine that is simulating the sensors. So then I have my storage account here and the place where you generate the SAS shared access signature is here. So you basically just specify the start and end date and uh, allowed permissions for your string and then you generate it and put it to Snowflake. And then you can start to make, make our stages to these specified blobs that are now listed inside my storage account. So now we're in Snowflake and what we have here, here we have created an external stage that points to the storage account that I just showed you. And it's pointing at this specified blob where I have these sensor readings in. Here I would insert my SAS token. So then after I've done it, I can freely copy data back and forth. Uh, for example, I can go deeper into this stage in this file path, I mean folder path, and query the data inside it. So here we see the JSON telemetries that are inside the stage. Then I can see the information schema to see how much data has been copied into my table in the last two hours. And the copying was done every hour in this case. And it's done by the automated function app 
in Azure. Okay, so I can see there's almost 10,000 JSON files loaded in the last two hours automatically. And yep, you can see it here. And this is actually the command that the function app is executing every hour. So it's taking all the new JSON data inside the stage and copying it to the pre-specified table. This is what takes the whole JSON. This gets us the file name. And as per Snowflake best practices, I'm already extracting a timestamp from within the JSON, which makes the future querying of the data much faster. So then we get to uh, combining different, different data. So I have three tables here. One is the table that contains the raw data from the sensors. So you see the JSON is here in the first column, then I have my metadata, the timestamp, and so forth. Then I have another table that has been loaded from my internal stage in a CSV format, and it contains additional information about all of these sensors, so I can join them based on this sensor ID. Then I have third table which is not mine, but this is actually a database that Snowflake has shared with me as a data share. Uh, I mean, this is not actually my table, this is Snowflake's table, and what you can see inside, there's a timestamp and JSON, and you can have, within this database, you can get weather readings from all over the world. So then I'm going to combine these three, and it doesn't matter that this one of these tables is provided to me by Snowflake and it's in the different database and two of these are in different schemas. And there's JSON, there's relational data, but none of it matters. So what I have done, I have first done a select statement, select statement to get all the data that I want. And then in the end, I wrapped it to a, a view. And as you can see, I'm just querying the JSON as well with normal SQL, I'm just choosing the column that I want and the key value from within the column. And it's that easy. And then when I have done this, the end result looks like a normal relational table with data integrated from all of the three different inputs. And since this is a view, this is not a physical table, but this is just a view on top of that all raw data that I have. And this is updating automatically as new data comes in from my uh, sensors from Azure and when Snowflake updates their data share and so forth. So then what I, what I want to do is to connect this view to Power BI, which is the BI tool in this case. And I'm going to quickly show you how that's done because that's really easy. Uh, actually, if you want to connect your Power BI, you have to first, if you haven't done so, go to the help in Snowflake user interface and then uh, download this ODBC driver and install it. Uh, it's, it's really quick and after you have done it, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But anyway, so back to Power BI, I'm going to select get data. And... Snowflake. Then I need to provide my account. Yep. And then I can choose to import the data to Power BI or query it directly. But I'm going to choose to import it now since I want to show that the table is actually in the Power BI after I have imported it. So then I can see all the stuff that's in my Snowflake account. Here's the view that we just looked at in Snowflake and I'm going to choose to load it. And since there are like one and a half million rows in this table, it's going to take a minute. So I'm going to meanwhile show you a already created uh, dashboard of the same data. So here I have four dashboards. This is the same data that I'm now importing back to the uh, other Power BI. 
So I have my sensor readings from all around the world. I see whether electricity consumption is largest by the average. I can query by date. I can choose different regions. Like Europe looks like this. And these readings might seem a little bit funny because I just made them up, but this gives a good example of what you could do with this. Then I have my list view. Here I have the sensor readings daily that are combined with the actual weather data and the sensor data. Here I have the readings from the last hour, which are actually real-time readings. Then I have location view. I can see all the important values. And these are actually real temperature data from the locations. Cool, let's see if the other one imported already. Okay, it's still going. But this is a pretty big example. I mean, the table is pretty big, but uh, if you would direct it, query it, you wouldn't need to obviously wait that it imports all the data to your computer. Okay, now I think it's about done. All right, so this is how fast it was to connect my BI to the Snowflake, even with this huge table. Yeah, now I see it here. And remember, this is just a view in Snowflake that, that's on top of raw JSON and CSV. And here I can handle it as a normal table and do whatever I want with it. And then let's see that the data is actually working. So let's create a map. Put city in there. Oops, not there. Here. Okay, works. Let's put a. By the electricity consumption. No, I have to change it to value. I think I'll have all my data types as a string in Snowflake. So, but yeah, now it's a uh, takes it as a number. Okay, let's see the average, right? But anyway, this is how you connect Snowflake to Azure and. Power BI with Snowflake. And uh, and it's important here is to note that uh, the stages that we, that we created in Snowflake, which was here in the up top, it doesn't mean that you can just uh, route data from Azure to Snowflake, but you can easily, for example, if you would have some kind of applications that need in Azure that need the transfer data to be ready, you could automatically route it to Snowflake, transform it there, and then, for example, using another function app, you could automatically route it back into the blob storage and then to be used with your, for example, machine learning studio or whatever in Azure. So it's really flexible and works both ways. Yeah, thanks for watching. This concludes the video of today and see you next time.